Hello and welcome back to Carry On with Criselda, the podcast that encourages and provides suggestions on improving lives through changing mindsets while we carry on with our day to day. I am your host, Criselda. Be sure to stay tuned to the end for a special lighthearted message. And now a fair warning. This episode may not look the way you expect it to. I will be discussing my personal journey with gratitude. It wasn't just something in and of itself that entered my life. It took a deep evaluation into my psyche in the form of a challenging process that I had to overcome in order to grow and become a better version of myself. The form that this process took that I'm about to share was my personal experience and in no way am I suggesting that this is the same method that you must undergo in order to achieve a spirit of gratitude. My purpose is to merely share how my life was before and after practicing gratitude. Your journey will be what is meant just for you. You know, some years ago, I was kind of a miserable soul. I went through a phase where I wasn't happy with my everyday life. And sadly, it had to do with material things. And this is where the dangers of social media can get you if you're feeling vulnerable. Because I would look at the lifestyles and homes that other people had on social media and then compare them to what I had or didn't have. Of course, we know that we are only seeing what the camera points at, and we don't see what we can't see. Again, I was in a vulnerable state, though. I went on for a while, complaining about what wasn't right or why something wasn't good enough. I couldn't graciously take a compliment because I would have to add, oh, thanks, but, and state the negative somehow. Well, without noticing it at the time, I was dealing with stress mixed with sadness with a sprinkle of a lack of control. And so began my journey and lesson into having a spirit of gratitude. I practiced gratitude before, but I guess you could say I veered off course. So if you don't mind, this will be more of a heart to heart talk kind of episode to share what misery that living without gratitude was like and how now living with a spirit of gratitude daily has benefited me greatly. So now that I've grown up more, I think, sometimes I feel like an adult child, I like to think I have some experiences worth sharing. You know, if you were my best friend or younger sibling, what would I advise you so that you don't get trapped in the same loop of disappointment that I was in? And here's what I would tell you. Back to my story, I was not happy with what I saw as I looked around my home. And by the way, just so you know, I was sorely ashamed by the behavior that I had, but not anymore because I worked through that too. So I didn't like that I had mismatched furniture sets or not enough room to store stuff, so I had piles of unorganized whatevers. And it didn't help that some of the social media posts would show these pristine, immaculate homes, and oh, here's a mother of four with a picked up house. Meanwhile, I'm struggling with keeping just one of my rooms tidy. Looking at social media when you are dealing with an underlying problem like sadness is the worst time to indulge, unless you clearly only stick with things that will uplift you. All I could think was, I needed more room. I just needed more storage so I could at least have things put away so that I wouldn't be embarrassed by an unexpected guest. No, that wasn't the problem. I felt bad that I couldn't keep a house that I could feel good about, but even worse, that I was stuck in this pitfall that I created for myself. Although it seemed like I lacked control in my situation, the opposite was true. But I was searching. I knew I needed to do something different to get myself out of this yucky feeling. I started to repeat the phrase, be grateful, in my head as much as I could remember every day. I stopped viewing social media in the things that exacerbated my vulnerable state. I even looked up videos of people living in underdeveloped countries. I'm not talking about the homeless conditions that people live in, although I watched those too. I'm talking about those who live in extremely modest homes, still having just what they need for living. And I would do that to remind myself to be grateful for what I have. 
And what happened next, I couldn't even tell you because I don't fully remember how I got there, but somehow the YouTube algorithm led me to looking at minimalism videos. Now, minimalism is a topic all on its own, and there are different levels of it. It doesn't have to mean to get rid of all your stuff until you are left with the bare minimum. One particular channel, The Minimal Mom, revealed that you can go as far as you like with it and stop when you want. And it's not about forcing you to give up things that you are not ready for. They encourage you instant wins by getting rid of things first that are considered trash anyway. Then you work your way from there. I thought, I could do that. I was immediately intrigued because the process of minimizing forces you to assess your possessions and really evaluate what you have and why. The light bulb moment went off for me. I mean, here I was feeling dissatisfied about what I didn't have, and now I was considering going through my whole house, room by room, and getting rid of things that I had not even thought about, some for years. It became my answer to my problems of how to get my house into a presentable state, not just for any unexpected visitor, but for me, and how to live in gratitude. The most interesting thing that began to occur was that as I began this endeavor to go through my house and get rid of stuff and more stuff by either giving them away or donating them, I started to see just how fortunate I have been throughout the years with all the things that I had. And when I ran into certain things that I had forgotten I even owned, it made me think back to how unfulfilled I was for not having even more. I mean, the things I was so readily willing to now give away was once new to me, and it satisfied that particular void at that particular time when I purchased it. And here I was worried about all the things I didn't have. What if I never answered the call to follow this process? Wasn't it possible I'd do it again? Buy more stuff for that temporary fix until the feeling dissipates? Although I didn't impulse shop for big items like furniture, I did do so for little things because it was on sale or it was inexpensive to begin with. Sometimes I'd end up returning the items. Other times I'd add it to the collection of other like items I had. Or if I didn't really need the item, I'd keep it just in case. And these were some of the items I was now happily getting rid of. There are a lot of thoughts and feelings that go on when you are minimizing your space. Have you ever gone through that process? It's amazing to see when you go through your stuff to get rid of and you begin to develop piles and piles of things and taking multiple trips to the donation center, just how much has been accumulated throughout the years. Then there were feelings of guilt. If I added all the things I've donated so far, how much would it be? And now I'm getting rid of it just like that? Well, not everything just like that. Some items I challenged myself to doing without by choice, but that's one of the things I began to discover as I was purging all my things. It made me want to look for more and more things. What else could I let go of? It was because I was making a dent in this process Plus, I kept my aim at my end goal, which was to have a space that felt like an Airbnb. I was starting to change my tune. No longer was I craving for what I didn't have. I could still make what I already had work for me. Getting a handle on all the stuff I was needlessly holding on to was putting me back in control. It started to feel really great. I was thankful. I was feeling a lighter load because now I had less to manage. And donating all those items or passing them on to others who could use them felt good too. I could have considered selling most of my stuff to recoup part of my loss, and I actually did store things in boxes for that purpose at first, but honestly, I found it too laborious to do. And holding them in a box until I could sell each and everything was not getting me the result I was after quick enough. In that season that I was in, I valued my time more than getting a fraction of what it was worth. So donate it was, which I was fine with. It actually felt better to bless someone else for nothing in return. In my mind, I thanked the items for serving me. That's how I worked through the feelings of guilt. And I'm talking about the things that were acquired mindlessly, the impulsive buys. I didn't feel guilty for the items that were intentional or thoughtful purchases. 
but the process did help me consider more carefully the things I purchased going forward and to be more mindful. So how have I fared with this process today? Well, I was able to get rid of lots of things to the point where it made an obvious difference in my home, but it's still a work in progress. It doesn't look like an Airbnb yet, and that's okay. As much as I did, it still made a difference in my life. Now I am not fixated on what I don't have to the point of sadness. Sure, there are still things I want from time to time, but I am not controlled by those desires. And the greatest thing that I developed from this process was gratitude. I am so grateful now to have gone through this journey. It made a much bigger impact than if I were to just read some articles or watch some videos on gratitude. Although yes, I did that too. But doing the intentional action of going through all of my stuff and evaluating what I should keep and not keep made a better impression in my mind. And guess what? If I were to see some of those social media posts today with those pristine homes, I would not feel the same way as I did before because I've been through a process and came out the other side better than I was. Also, I just don't view material things the same way anymore. The reason being is having and feeling gratitude is way more important to me than worrying about what I don't have. Now, if I see something I like that I don't have, my thoughts are more like, hmm, that's nice. Maybe that's something I can strive for in the future. But in more cases than not, if the opportunity presents itself to get that thing, I no longer care to have it. Something else about gaining a spirit of gratitude is that although it began with getting rid of my stuff, it automatically stretched over to other things. It grew to being grateful for my health, my family, which of course I was already grateful for, but I became grateful for every single day and even the little things that we sometimes forget are there. But the more you practice gratitude, the more positive you become. In fact, gratitude decreases stress and abates depression because your focus is not on the bad things. Remember what I said in the episode, Drop the Lies? Your thoughts have more power than you realize. If you haven't heard that episode yet, you should totally check it out after this. Although I said this was going to be more of a chit chat, might I suggest two things you may consider for practicing a spirit of gratitude? Maybe a gratitude journal. It's something that you can do every day to remind you of all the positive things or people in your life that you can reflect on. Another one is a vision board, which you can do in different ways. You can get an actual poster board and cut and paste different pictures, words, or quotes that inspire you. You can also do it with a whiteboard or a cork board. With this method, you can more easily update or change out your pictures. The last is digitally using an app like Canva. If you've never heard of a vision board, think of it like a collage of things that you want to see in your life as reminders of things you are grateful for or things that represent what you are striving toward, making sure you display it in a place that you can see it every day to reflect. I personally use both, a gratitude journal I write in every day before I go to bed and a vision board I created on Canva that I have saved to my phone, which I look at every day. So that's it. A reminder that we all have our own journey that we are trying to navigate. If this inspired you, I am super grateful. And if this is not quite aligned to the journey that you are on right now, that's okay. I hope that you could at least appreciate the story that I shared and maybe draw some kind of inspiration anyway. Until next time, remember to carry on with gratitude. Welp, here we are. It feels like we're settling in as a comfortable couple, you in this podcast. No longer do awkward silences feel awkward anymore. We finish each other's... You said sentences in your head, didn't you? Or you said sandwiches. See? We enjoy each other's humor, don't we? We go together like peanut butter and... Ah, you did it again, didn't you? We love how we are there for you, and you are there for us. It's just about perfect, except for one thing, that you blank this podcast. I knew you could fill in that sentence. See, 
It only makes sense that you follow, right? I mean, if you really loved us, you'd follow this podcast. No, 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 no. That's not the right thing to say. Too manipulative. We know better than that. Okay, try again. I know that you will do the right thing because you, our darling listener, are a person of high caliber with such a caring quality that makes us want to be a better podcast. How's that? Yeah? Nice. Okay, we'll see you next time. <laughs>